Thank you for tuning in to the Mile High Life Network's Happy Friday Denver podcast. We are really excited to be here with you on this gorgeous day. You know, I love I love my time here and spending it with uh, great friends. We definitely support the Frickishinas. They bring that beep bop and head bob every single week on the intro and outro. I really enjoy their music and they're doing so many awesome things. We got some some stuff coming up on that pretty quick. Uh, but I am joined by some great people. My man, Kevin, the mystery Batstone. Happy Friday, Denver, and happy 4th of July weekend to everyone. Hope everyone's safe. Have some fun with your fireworks, but mind the fire danger out there. It's good to see everyone. I'm also joined with John the Marathon Ekstrom. You are incorrect. I am John the Trash Panda King Ekstrom because we support the Frickishinas. Their new album just dropped. It is called Thanks for the Invite. I special ordered the vinyl, so I got this bitchin' t-shirt. I also got this album, which has a special Happy Friday Easter egg right in there for you to check out. So make sure you're looking at that. One more thing. I'm not drinking my traditional Dales tonight. I'm drinking this from Emporium Brewing. It's called No Handlebars. They brewed it in collaboration for Bike to Work Day. What a cool event. Earlier this week, man, it's been a good week, and it's nice to see you, gents. I love the energy. I love the energy, man. I am your host on this episode, Arthur Ra. And we're going to kick this thing right off with something so ridiculous that we couldn't not add it. So a homeowner had a box of bees thrown at him from a Nightmare RTD bus station. (laughs) And poor Gwyneth. Uh, Did you guys have a chance to read through this at all? A little bit. uh, And what the fuck, man? Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. Yeah. Yeah, poor, poor Gwendolyn. So she had wanted to get her own place for a while. She finally got her, her place where she's supposed to be able to rest and relax. And she's always hearing all this chattering out at this bus stop, talk talks of drugs. And well, Jesus, it's Colorado Boulevard and yeah. Bruce Randolph. Yes. Which, if you've been by there, you know it's rough. There's a Walgreens there and, like, a 7-Eleven. It's, uh, it's interesting country up there. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. usually someone yelling, you know, like running around <laughs> yelling, maybe shirtless. Yeah. That's usually what I see in that vicinity. Yeah, uh, having a problem with volume yes. and uh, proper clothing. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's a discrepancy in that area. Yeah. Things don't fit. It's a shortage. Because they're either too large or too small. Both are there. But, okay, so the weird thing about this is, first of all, where does somebody acquire a box of bees? And this box of bees still had the queen in it. Well, you know my friend Bob Sacamano? You could talk to him. That's a Seinfeld reference for oh. your benefit, Art. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So Kramer has a friend named Bob Sacamano, who uh, you can get pretty much anything from him, including the time when uh, Elaine buys rat hats from him um, because she's trying to replace a $8,000 mink one. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, get it from Bob Sacamano. Keep going. <laughs> that was my first thought, too, though, Art. Like, it's Bob like, Sacamano? Where, well, no. Yeah, that, no, totally. That was my second thought, John. Yeah. My first thought was, who that, where are you going to get these bees? Like, who's going around with a shoebox and picking these things up with tweezers? Or Like, how, how are we? Well, no, so you it, think they're doing it with tweezers? No, so I don't know what they're doing it so with. So bees like, swarm around a queen, and when they find a new hive, they do what they call a swarm. And so... Hey, what's they, the difference between bees and wasps again? So one is furry and one is shiny. The we, furry, we did cover this. no need to worry. Shiny, <laughs> watch the hiney. Right, thanks. For all the listeners oh. who didn't tune in on the last one, you're missing out. It was you our should, science episode. Yeah, yeah you, should, you should get in on that. So I just think it's crazy, crazy way, crazy way to start the show. I mean, poor lady. Hopefully they can get the transit um, security out there. And the, the Denver PD has made comments saying that they are aware of the situation and trying to make a bigger impact in that area but i have a feeling this will be ongoing so something else that's hot is denver right now yeah Den- fi- finally i mean we still seem to be getting rain and there's more rain in the forecast which where the hell is this coming from right uh but it finally reached 90 degrees it is uh july 21st is the latest time that happened in 1967 but there have been 13 times which the first 90 degree day Happen later than June 27th, which is when we hit it this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is very, very late. But I welcome it. I love the heat. I mean, you're you're dressed like a Bible salesman, like always. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I, kind of a dirtbag Bible salesman, though. Like if HBO did a take on a Bible salesman, <laughs> that's like how you look. Thank right? you. Is that fair? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yes. You're welcome. That's the Anytime. best time. That's the greatest compliment I've received all day. Yeah. And I love the heat, man. I'm a big <laughs> fan of it for sure. But it's, you know, the weather patterns are just different this year as we've come. Yeah. A lot of rain. I thought it was supposed to be like a brutal hot summer, too. Yeah. Like because El Nino is coming. Right. Which, if you don't know, is Spanish for the Nino. Yes. Uh, but that's supposed to make us even hotter. 
but I don't know, man. It's but we're just weird. creeping into it. All right, so we yeah. just got through more extreme rain than we've seen in a long time. And it, I wouldn't say extreme, but consistent rain. Yeah. And that we've seen Dude, in a, we've, a really long time. We've accumulated more rainfall than Seattle yeah. up to that's, this point. That's that's which, is, which is nuts. Which is And so insane. you guarantee with, with the rain being like that, the heat is also probably going to be more extreme. And Shit, that's my prediction not. coming into the next two months. It's probably going to be a little, little crisp. Well, with all the moisture, too, it's it's created for a very humid environment. So yeah. it's that, that hot and sticky. Yeah, we're not used to that here. We're not used to that here. You know, as they call it, the swamp ass season, yeah. you know, where <laughs> things get really moist down below and it can cause for chafing. So I recommend, uh, you know, do, doing what Dude, you need we, to do to address we gotta that. we got to put a trigger warning on this episode if you're going to use the word moist like that because some people fucking hate it. But swamp that. ass flies? Yeah, uh, I think <laughs> I, I think if you asked a certain subset of the population what was worse, huh. moist or swamp ass, but how, how a would lot you, of them would say moist. How would you describe a cake? Like, if you wanted a good I'm with cake, you 100%. Moist you know doesn't bother me, doesn't dude. doesn't bother me. Yeah. I, I'm not I bothered. Think it's a, I think it's a wonderful word. Wait, so you're speaking for people that... Yeah, no, like... You're not even... One, you're not one of those people. go on this rant? Before? No, I have. I have. Okay, yeah. Like, Often. I don't give a shit. Yeah. But it's like, for those sensitive folks, maybe... <laughs> to moist, yeah. It's like, this episode is moist. To is, moist or not to moist? <laughs> that is the question. Is moist an onomatopoeia? Uh... <laughs> Oh, dude, that is a loaded question. <laughs> Phenomenal. I, I just, because I'm, I'm thinking, right, like when I think onomatopoeia, I think buzz, right, going back to these yeah. bees. Uh-huh. Or like bang or kapow bang, or kapow. whatever. Yeah. Would moist be considered no. that? Because it, I, I guess it, it doesn't. It could be? No. Could, you'd, you'd have to say it in a really, really creepy and gross way. Moist. Mm, moist. Moist. What? <laughs> where mm. where is this podcast? Okay, as the MC, look, there has been some extra, okay, th- from birth to mountaintop, our next our our next one is yep Brian. Brian is a solid lad. I'm going to tell you that right now. Brian Scarberry hiked from his birthplace to the top of Evans, which is crazy because he was born you know down here in the city. This is a 50, 75 mile trek, loaded up with That's gear. Huge. He takes it from the hospital he was born at, walks up the hill to the base of Evans, and then proceeds to summit this mountain hmm. i mean that's pretty extreme he's camping out this was this wasn't just a one-day adventure guys this this was a, a full really commitment. he didn't walk 75 miles in one day get out of here wasn't what's that one song now i will walk 500 <laughs> miles and i will walk 500 more <laughs> just <a pretty. laughs> So, and that, yeah, no, of course he didn't walk 75 miles in one day, but. Was it like four days? What did it take him? Yeah, I'm, was I, it? it was about nine days, I think, when it was all said and done. By the oh, time okay. he came back down the hill. Oh, sure. You oh, know, that, that's, that's, first of all, I wouldn't attempt it. No. You know, I have all I can do to drive to the base of it and then hike it. So, the fact that he did this, I mean, I tip my hat to him. I think that's incredible. And he's training now to do Mount Everest, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Whichever well, shoes he was wearing, if, if I was a representative of that shoe brand, if I was an ambassador, I would definitely sponsor this guy. If you were a shoe? Yeah, the, shoe, the no, shoes he, that he wore. Okay. Yeah, an, amb- an ambassador of the shoe brand. I wonder, yeah. I wonder what shoe he was wearing. You were fucking with your pocket protector or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I was. Um, I, yeah, I wonder what brand it was. I really don't know. I don't know. It was probably some nice hiking shoes. You know, I, I'm not going to list them off, but. I don't know. So, I think he did them in the reef flip flops with the bottle opener on the bottom. Oh, oh that would be. That would see, be that, full, that's full record material. Mm-hmm. If you're, cool. Yeah, if you're, if you're summoning the mountains with those on, yeah. you deserve an award. With the bottle opener on the bottom. I had those too. You did? Oh, yeah. Did you really? open some bottles? Yeah. <laughs> One time I was sitting there like this, and my friend just came up to me and goes, <laughs> did it, got beer everywhere. He's like, yeah, I'm not even going to drink this. I just wanted to do that. <laughs> I go, you know what? I respect it. Power move. Well, That's done. fun. That's fun. Well, I bet you he was awful hungry after that trek and that hike. Oh, well done. Yeah, so I'm sure you could. Uh, Endless Shrimp is out. Mm-hmm. Endless Shrimp is here to stay, guys. Okay, I don't know if you're Red Lobster fans out there, but <laughs> okay. get cranked, man. Because Endless Shrimp is finally here forever, right? It's not a seasonal promotion. Forever. Forever. Ah. We fucked it up. Yeah, oh, it sorry. like the Budweiser frogs. But anyway, sorry, sorry. for 20 bucks, customers can start with two shrimp dishes and then order more. Options include, here comes Bubba from uh, Forrest Gum, yep. coconut shrimp, garlic grilled shrimp skewers, garlic shrimp scampi, and other. I did a good job of... Uh, typing this out didn't i and other i like that (laughs) (laughs) uh it comes with a side as well as cheddar bay biscuits now i myself have eaten red lobster a grand total of one time that i can remember really yeah only ever just like your number of camping trips yes uh yes camping trips and red lobster visits neck and neck right now we're seeing (laughs) at one piece we're seeing a theme here how about hikes you've got to have done more hikes than one i I probably but i don't count them because i'm just waiting till they're over (laughs) um in this case 
you guys, you told me an unhinged story about, like, I think it was Mash the Gas related. Yep. Um, about being in a Red Lobster with Kev's caveman fucking co-host from that. And uh, do you go to Ma- uh, do you go to Mash the Gas regularly? I'll bet you do. Do you go to Red Lobster regularly? And will this make you go more? Hmm. So I have a shellfish allergy. So, oh, so it's a perfect restaurant for you. Yeah, so shrimp Great. and lobster is, is out for me, which sucks because I grew up in New England, and that's you know where it all comes from. Dude, that so seems to speak. cruel. It's, it, it's kind of a bummer. That'd be so, like me being allergic to a hatch chili. Yeah, exactly. Like, what the fuck? You're allergic to your, your native land's uh, you know, <laughs> cr- local crustacean. Is that why you live here now? Um, it's one of the reasons. Okay, good. It's one of the reasons. I like it out Sorry. here. Sorry. It's nice. Keep going. Yeah. So what do you get there? So if I do go there, I'm going to get like the, the Atlantic salmon or... Oh, okay. Um, other creatures from the sea? Yeah. Like, I'll do, you know, I'm not going to go to Red Lobster and get fish sticks. No. You know, you can get that at the buffet. You know, I'm not going to go to Red Lobster and order fish sticks. But maybe nah. fish and chips. With they a have bit of, fish sticks there? Yeah. Well, they have, like, <laughs> they have, like, fish and chips, right? Yeah. With malt vinegar. Yeah. Hey, you know what it reminds me of? It's like, hey, do you want to eat four string cheeses before dinner? You're like, no, what the fuck's wrong with you? Why would I want to eat four string cheeses? It's like, well, you know what we did? We deep, we breaded them, we deep fried them, and we served them with a side of marinara. Like, yes. <laughs> and you go, oh, yeah, no, that seems perfect before what I'm really going to eat. Yeah. I mean, it is still delicious. Look, I like the shrimp. I like shrimp dishes. And it sounds like something that I'm probably going to end up taking advantage of. Um, Where's the nearest Red Lobster to you? I would say that the nearest one is maybe off of, like, Santa Fe? Mm, wow. It's a bit of a ways. I don't you know. You can it's always go to Northfield, too. It's probably close. To, the one that's closest to you is probably the one <laughs> closest to me. Five well, blocks away. Yeah. I, I don't have a Red Lobster five blocks away from me. That's unfortunate. Believe me, if I did, I'd still be ignoring it. So my yeah. life would be unchanged. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. I, I, I would like to challenge myself, get one of each type of shrimp and see if I could eat all of it. And do they allow me to take uh, stuff to go? No. See, that that's... Come on. Let, let me get the Dude, most out of my money here. Th- you're going to bankrupt the restaurant but with you that. Can't, you can't behavior. just, like... You can't abuse it. Like, what if it's just, like, two or three shrimps and I'm like, come on, like, I just couldn't eat those two or three. They're probably going to let you take it. I don't care. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not too sure. It's kind of like you know, endless wings or bottomless, whatever it is. Mm. I mean, there's there's got to be a loophole always there somewhere where they have to, you know, put a limit on it. Yeah, well, exciting times. Sticking with the food theme right now, uh, there is an anticipated restaurant opening off of East Colfax. Yeah, there is. I found this article earlier this week. Bon Appetit listed eight great locations that are going to be opening up um, all around the country, and this restaurant made it here for Denver. It's called Sapsua. It's going to be a very high end Vietnamese cuisine cuisine off of East Colfax. Um, I've never really. You know, dove too deep into this style of cuisine. Like when I think Vietnamese, I think Vietnamese. Food, you know, noodle soup like fuck. You're transposing mm-hmm. the N and the M too. You're saying Vietnamese. Vietnamese. It's Vietnamese. Vietnamese. There you go. Vietnamese. Yeah. Viet- Vietnamese. Yeah. See, I, we, we're gonna eat some Vietnamese. We're gonna go eat some Viet some food oh, from Vietnam. Nummy nummy. Yes. Nummy nummy from Viet nummy nummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this place, I mean, they That's had a awful. soft opening. Please don't hold that against me. Of course. Um, these guys just opened Promo up clip. on Wednesday. And no promo clip, but, um, you know, so far it's looking pretty good as far as what the menu's looking like. Uh, some of the food critics that are coming in saying, man, this is going to be good. They have, you know, delicious treats, too, as it's well. Some intense, morning. Yeah, it looks good. So, I don't know, John, it's probably five blocks from your place. Probably. You're going to go check it out? I'll do my best. I mean, I love being up on the hot tip here, mm-hmm. which uh, is phenomenal. But uh, as far as Vietnamese food, I would say um, only pho yeah. and uh, banh mi. Which are great sandwiches. You ever had a banh mi? I actually have not. Oh, shit, is that is that like one of the, like the, the steamed bun it's, type of things? Uh, no, no. That's like a bao bun. Okay. Um, no, what I'm, I'm talking, it's like a hoagie. Huh. Like, like a, it's, it's like a sub sandwich, but with like Vietnamese ingredients. So it's like a mix of usually like roast pork and like uh, carrots and cucumber and radish. And like, it's really, really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, for something like this, it's, it's fun to treat yourself. Like, I think like four times a year, once a quarter you can treat yourself to like, you know, a really expensive meal, right? You go spend 200 bucks on like 200 people, something like, or two people. <laughs> That's a cheap meal. Everyone eats for a dollar. <laughs> We're all eating Costco hot dogs. Yeah, so at some point I could totally see myself like, all right, let's go try the fancy Vietnamese food. You know, that I think sounds it could dope be good. as shit. I think it'd be good. So one cool thing that's happening uh, in Denver in the Rhino area is an arts uh well, actually, they're, they're completing a community center uh, for local creators to come in. Um, also, you it, you could use it for free if you fall underneath uh, specific cultures. Um, and it's really exciting. It's taken over four years to build this, over $2 million. It's 4,000 square feet, community and performing arts facility. And actually, it's been like a decade in the making. So really great place for community to come in, artists to get together. 
I'm really happy that they're doing this. Rhino's been blowing up, right? And if you've if you've been out there, the Mission Ballroom, out to the, to the music, any of the restaurants, you just see all this construction around. And it's been like that for years and years and years. Yeah. So once that construction is actually complete, I feel like the vibe is going to completely change out there. Let's hope so. And hopefully it's uh, you know affordable, affordable for people to live in the area. Well, dude, here's the bitch about arts districts. It's that all the hipsters and the bohemians and the artists and all the crazy creators all flock to an area, right? And then they make it cool, and it gets popular, then developers come in, and they price everyone out, and it becomes just like this other corporate front, which a lot of people have argued is what has happened in Rhino. So, like, we got to make space for the artists to actually come in so they can live and live in the fucking thing that's titled the art district. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I mean, gentrification is one of those tough issues that's sticky, that doesn't have a lot of great solutions because some of this is just capitalism at work. But honest to God, the fact that they're... That they're making, uh, I, I will give them the benefit of the doubt here. I will give them good intentions in trying to lure artists back to the place where artists made cool. So, like, if you can keep doing that, man, more power to you. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a good move. You know, you label it an art district. It makes sense. This is kind of what the, the community is going to be feeling in that area, doing art, you know, looking at art. You know, what do you think it's going to look like, though? Do you think it's just going to be like a collaboration of of like murals and, and people hanging out, like doing art festivals together. Like what, what are the, some of the things that you think are going to take place I mean, in this district? It, it'll probably be rotating, you know, like with the seasons, like that changes. So will the art and installations that they have and type of artists that they're featuring. And I feel like the mayor was saying some stuff where they've recognized that Colorado has a lot of untapped uh, creatives that are, you know, wanting to have areas to put their stuff out there. Getting priced out. Yeah, and that, that's what they want to kind of use this facility for. And I did see a line where they want to try to keep it affordable for people to live in the area. Yeah. So we all know how that goes. You let's know. hope it works. Let's hope it works. Uh, yeah, it's, let's it's, hope it works. It's a bold move, and let's hope that the universe rewards yeah, it's it It's a bold us. strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it works out for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so move, moving along here, we got uh, 15 highest rated museums in Colorado. Yeah, this was another cool article I found this 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 week, guys. Uh, TripAdvisor kind of rated some of the museums here in Colorado, and there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them I haven't visited. I've visited a couple of them, of course. Um, you guys have been around a lot longer in these parts than I have, so I'm sure you probably had a chance to visit uh, quite a few of these that I have not. But I want you guys to take a guess and kind of think, what do you think? We can go top three, top two. Let's go top three and mm -hmm. kind of see if you guys can guess. What, uh, there's some obvious ones in there, of course, but let's take a stab at it. So uh, my first guess when, when you – I didn't read the article, but, like, my first guess was Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Okay, so yeah, that's, that, was, that was my first guess, that's, too. That's in the top three. Okay, yeah. because that museum is phenomenal. I'm it, a member there. I bring my kids there constantly. Mm. It's a fucking – Terrific yep. museum. So, okay, that's in the top three. Is, that is, the, is the Aviation <clears throat> Museum one of them? Oh, Wings Over the Rockies? Yeah, is that one That's of a them? good one. That, that is a good one. That is also in the top three. Oh, cool. So oh, cool. Right. Now, now we have, so the third one is National Museum of World War II Aviation. Oh, no, okay. that's different then. Oh, it is? Yeah, no, Wings Over the Rockies is a different museum. Oh, okay. okay. So, so that one's not in the top three. So the National Museum of World War II Aviation did make number three. Oh, okay. Wow, no, that sounds cool. Number two, Denver Museum of Science, which, which uh -huh. we've got. Okay. So now we're going for number one. What's number one? It, is it the Art Museum? Nope. Is the uh, Museum of uh, Contemporary the, Art. It's the, a, I was the, actually aquarium, the like zoo and aquarium doesn't count. Right? No. So so I was surprised yeah. I'm actually surprised by what did make number one because I wouldn't I wouldn't really view this as a museum. Huh. What what is it? I don't I don't know. Any any other guesses? What, what is it like? It can't. Is it some? Is it fucking like the botanic gardens? Or Nailed something? it. I, really? I knew, I knew you were gonna. That's get a it. museum. That's like, it. That's well, what when they, you said it's not a museum, that kind of gave you a hint. Yeah. Huh. I'll, like. I mean, it is epic. Denver Botanical right, Gardens cool, made number yeah. one, yeah. As, according to TripAdvisor's top 15 museums really? to visit in Colorado. That, really? Okay, that feels like a, like, how do you, it's, the classification just feels odd there. But, yeah. I mean, Botanic Gardens is killer. It is. It's actually yeah, really Yeah, cool I place. feel like the Botanic Gardens is like a zoo or an aquarium, but for plants. <laughs> I mean, that. <laughs> you, well, okay. <laughs> let's, let's pull on that thread just a little bit more. <laughs> then you could say it's also a museum for plants. When you get right down to it. It's a plant yeah. museum. It yeah. is. It yeah. is. So would the butterfly pavilion be a butterfly museum? No, uh, it's a pavilion. Sure. My, my Here's the story. She never listens to this show, so I'm going to tell it. I'm at the <laughs> butterfly pavilion. My mother-in-law was like up our asses about like, be careful. Don't step on the butterflies. Blah, and would like tiptoe around them and point at them and stuff. Okay. And at one point I go, yo, Vicky, hey. Duh! And she stepped on a butterfly and killed it. Oh, no. And I go, for all your horse shit, all, all, like, at us, like, hey, don't, you know, don't do this. And then she stepped on one. Yeah. So we go, all right, well, 
the cruel hand of irony strikes once again. Oh God, <laughs> that's quite a story. It, it, it's it's cold steel and it it hits hard. Yep, it does. So also, what's going to hit hard is the surround sound and all the movie theaters this summer. And we got blockbuster season coming. Oh up. shit, yeah, dude, it's my favorite time of the year for movies. Like tentpole movies, fucking uh, show up in the summer, right? And especially when we were kids. Like so, in the when I was a kid in the nineties. The cinema was like the center of all social activity, right? Mm. You kind of build your entire like friendships, not friendships, but like friend gatherings about going to movies. And so the Ringer had a really great article. I didn't catch, you know, the uh, the date on it. I, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be talking about the past here. But the big one coming up this Fourth of July is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, mm-hmm. which I just took my kids to see. Oh God, uh, Elemental, I think. Oh, was that good? It was fine. Yeah. Um, the animation was great. The story, you, you, like, in the Lack first lesser. five minutes, yeah. you'll know exactly where it's going and be right. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's kind of a detriment to it. But um, so The Ringer had this article about ranking all the July 4th uh, releases in the past. Did you guys happen to look at this? Did you glance at it? I glanced at it. Yep. Okay. And, like, did you go through the list? Because, I mean, there's one on there that was... Very much for you. Oh, yeah. that's I'm going to be yeah, yeah, out here good. shortly. Did you look at it? I'm pretty sure that I did not. Okay. Well played. And, and uh, But I did pick out some movies that I'm really excited for. Uh, great. Let's start with you then. Oh, well, um, I do want to – this is already out, the Spidey, the Spideyverse. I want to see that second one. I've heard a lot of great things. And then I'm getting kind of more into the creepy stuff right now, and I want to see uh, The Boogeyman. I want to see that. I think that, looks, I think that looks actually pretty good. Okay. So back to the topic at hand that I actually wrote in here. Um, the best summer blockbusters. So these ones came out on July 4th. So I remember Independence Day. I mean, mm. obviously, like that's an obvious one. Epic. Came, came mm. out in 96 and it's called Independence Day and it became the biggest fucking movie of the year. That one I saw with my mom in theaters and I like we had the best time. Mm-hmm. Um, the next year was Men in Black. Epic. Like that came out too. That was a fun July 4th event. Um, I went and saw South Park, the South Park movie, Bigger, Longer and Uncut with my buddy Steven in Houston. And we were like the youngest people in there because he had to be 17 and had an absolute blast seeing that. So, Kev, what what jumped out at you on this list? Well, of course, you know, I love racing. And uh, ah, so we have a movie. You do? Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> mate, you guys, I know you yeah, guys didn't know I've that. heard you say that maybe once. Yes, yes. So if you, no surprise, but there's this movie coming out about a racer, <laughs> and it's called Gran Turismo, and I think ah. it's going to be fantastic. It's coming out here in early August. That'll definitely be one I see in the cinema. I don't go to theaters often unless it's like a movie I have to see. Like mm. The last time I went to a theater was for Avatar. Before that was like Ford vs. Ferrari, Terminator, Dark Fate. You know, like I have to be really, really excited about this film to go see it at the cinema. So Gran Turismo is what I'm looking forward to this summer. But from that list is what I mean. I think, I think nothing, we both failed, failed your nothing, project. Nothing jumped week, out at me John. from the list. I thought you were talking about Gran Turismo. Really? So Terminator 2, having been released on July 4th weekend, didn't jump out at you? Oh, well, Terminator 2, of course, yeah. It's from the fucking link that I asked you both to prep. Right, man. I thought you were talking about a movie coming out this summer. No! Okay. I'm talking about this list that I this thought, segment is built around. I thought you were talking about movies coming out this summer that I wanted to see. No, God damn it. Well, of course, T2, which, guess what? <laughs> I just watched last or two nights ago. Good for you. Yep. Okay, go to the next fucking... I'm done. But, but I'm it, was, done. it wasn't on 4th of July, and this is actually a perfect segue because I want to talk about how important it is to enjoy the present. Great. <laughs> That's exactly where I'm going with this. So obviously life creeps by. We can't live in the past. We can learn from those lessons. We can look forward to the future and work toward it, but we're not living in the future. So right now is the only moment that we actually have. And I do my best to notice this. So I'm going to go into the past just slightly. But last weekend, um, I spent some time in Seattle, and when I was sailing with my dad, I recognized how much I appreciated that moment in the present time, and it really meant a lot to me. So I was curious, and I wanted to ask both of you, has there been any times recently that you noticed in that moment that you were really enjoying yourself, and you kind of got lost in that present moment? Anything recently? Yeah, or just a, a, a piece of time that in that moment you were really like... You know, this is a this is a great moment right here, right now. Yeah, I mean, nothing really jumps out at me. I think it kind of depends on what's going on. You know, we've obviously had some great moments here and doing some fun stuff this this year. Those those are always fun and exciting accomplishments. I kind of look at that as living in the in, in the moment. But I don't know. It's nothing really jumps out at me from recent that that was you know exhilarating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, as a parent, um, you can't wish time away with your kids because you can think to yourself. Oh, I can't wait till they're out of diapers or I can't wait till they're sleeping through the night or I can't wait till 
X, Y, and Z. You can, you can set any number of invisible milestones for yourself. Um, but what's important is enjoying your kids as they are currently. And the more that you can do that, the more parenting tends to be fun. And so, yeah, I get annoyed having to do like the same bits with my kids sometimes because mm-hmm. I do this whole thing at bedtime with one of my kids that um, I'm like, oh, God, I have to like do this improvisational comedy again. She never gets tired of it. <laughs> She's all about it. Okay. But I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do this forever. Mm-hmm. So lean into it and have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy it while you got it. So, yeah, let's just all take a moment out there. Um, try to appreciate our day a little bit. I know life can be hectic and come at us from seven different angles. So we have to be actively doing our best to see the, see the light within the day. So what's going on this weekend? Obviously, Fourth of July. Uh, wh- what's happening with you guys? What are you guys up to? Uh, I got some family time. Uh, Fourth of July is great. Uh, I love this country. I feel privileged to be born in America. So I celebrate this country. However you celebrate this country or however you feel about this country, literally do whatever you want. If you think this country is fucked up and unjust, protest it. That's the beauty of this country. You can protest it. If you think it's wonderful, blow some shit up, grill some meat, drink some, do whatever you like. But most importantly, this is the one day a year where it is legally obligated and encouraged to flip off a British person. (laughs) <laughs> because literally that's what we did when we signed the Declaration of Independence and then give them a big old hug because Britain's a great ally of ours. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, a, it's just a fun weekend. Every year you look forward to it. It's hot outside. you got people coming out together. There's barbecues, late night hangouts, drinking beers, grilling meat, like you said. You know, just be safe. Don't drink and drive. Be careful with your fireworks. You know, don't set anyone's house on fire. Don't be shooting Roman candles at each other. That's stuff I used to do when I was a kid, and I just don't recommend it. But there is some other fun things that's coming up this weekend. 311's at Red Rocks. If you're into, you know, that kind of music, that's going to be fun tomorrow night up at the at the Red Rocks. Uh, Art, what you got going on? Um, I'm not going to be attending this, but I do know some folks that are, and that is the Expo, a.k.a. Comic-Con, at the uh, Convention Center. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Whatever you do this weekend, stay safe, and we absolutely appreciate you joining and spending some time with us. Uh, We are always honored to be here and be a part of the Mile High Life Network. Definitely check out all the awesome podcasts that are on there. Denver's finest, as I like to say. Uh, Definitely reach out to us at happyfridaydenver at gmail.com. Follow us on all the social media, and that's happyfridayden, D-E-N, on all the different social media platforms. And such an honor to be here. We're going to bring it out with the Friction Let's go. (laughs) 